days at Tovala.com. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. All right, great friends. I have been just loving this Eric Weddle story over the last, I'd say, four, five, six weeks. I mean, I just can't get enough of it. And I, I think the reason I love it so much is because I think of Eric Weddle as being like as normal and as regular a guy as there is, like like lives in San Diego. You can run into him at a basketball game because he's watching his kids. He's part of this community. And then to come out of retirement after two years and not just play, forget about just playing immediately be a leader, immediately be a guy who his teammates love. It just says so much about who he is. And, and here he is finally uh, a chance. I've, I've been trying to leave him alone until after the Super Bowl was over. Eric Weddle is on Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown man from the seven mile casino studios, Eric. Hello. Good afternoon. And congratulations. And it's, uh, it's been a whirlwind to, uh, be in this position right now as a Super Bowl champ that honestly the dream of that uh when you retire it it, it becomes null and void right and you and you move on with your life and try to try to do the next chapter and to be able to sit here now with everything that's transpired over the last five weeks is, is just it's uh it's hard to fathom and it's 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 almost surreal in a sense that it, it was like a five-week dream and now I'm back home doing my normal routine, woke up, made breakfast, made lunches, dropped the kids off at school. And uh, then I get reminded of my peckless arm and I say, oh, man, it is real. It is real. <laughs> well, let, let's start with this. Today is uh, and it was earlier today, but the Rams had their parade in L.A. When I yeah. texted with you yesterday, I assumed that today would not be a good day. But you said, no, today is a good day because you have surgery now. Because, of course, five weeks of NFL football <laughs> after two years of retirement has to turn hey. into an operating room. But but why did you choose today to not go to the parade? Yeah, I mean, I haven't been home in five and a half weeks. And uh, it's it, it's been a long, a long, hard journey, in a sense, of – I've had the time of my life, don't get me wrong, but it's been extremely difficult on my wife and kids. And honestly, like, I love my teammates and we'll be entrenched in the history books, but getting on a bus for two hours, then hanging out for another two hours, then going back for two hours, then finally going home. Like, I just need to get home and see my kids and get back to uh, my life before all this, because uh, dad needed to be home. And, and that was the most important thing on my mind. Well, let's go back to the beginning of all of this. Then. So the Rams are going into the playoffs. They've got injuries in the secondary. They call you. I mean, come on. What, what kind of a human being is physically capable of, of not playing NFL football for two years, not going through the practices, not going through the off season conditioning programs, not being in film study. What kind of person can just walk right into a football team? We all thought, if I'm being honest, man, if they got to play Eric, man, they're going to be in some trouble here. Of course. How, how were Rightfully you, so. Yeah, how were you thinking about it when you got the call? I, I just thought it was, I thought it was insane, first and foremost, that they would think of something as crazy as that. And, uh, you know, honestly, I, I didn't even... I didn't even think it was serious when it first happened, when they first, when Raheem called me and, you know, we're talking and, and then he just got straight to the point and throughout the idea of, you know, do I think I could play 10, 15 snaps Monday night, which was literally five days from when I got that call. And in my mind, I'm like, Holy smokes. Like what you're asking me to do is crazy. Uh, but they, they were in, they were in dire need, uh, to say the least, man, to have both of their starting safeties go down. And then the backups who had never played and the, uh, you know, Terrell Burgess was actually a nickel corner who had never played safety. So I could see why, uh, the thought was valid in their mind. And, uh, it was just a rush of emotions, quite honestly. Like, you know, I, I built, uh, I built a legacy of doing it the right way. And I, and I don't take for granted how hard it is to play in this league, the training, 
the effort, the practicing, all that. So all that running through my mind, you know, over the course of a few hours and then talking to other coaches and obviously talking to my wife. And uh, at the end of the day, I just kept coming back that this was for a reason. Uh, I was meant to be on this team in this moment for whatever reason. I don't know at the time. Uh, I don't know if it was to bring the team together. Was it to, to, to give them a jolt of energy after that tough Niners loss? Uh, was it to play? Was it just to be a sparing to get them through this week? Right. It, it, I don't know what it was at the time looking back, uh, you know, on it. And I tell my kids, I tell my, my boys on my 12 U team that uh, we don't, I don't live with regrets. I live each day to the fullest. And how could I go back to them? And look them in the face if I didn't take this opportunity and listen and, and at least see what happened, right? Yeah. Uh, take it, go practice. I fall flat on my face. I go home on sa Saturday morning, right? But maybe it works out and, and who knows what happens, right? And look, five weeks later, you couldn't, you couldn't have envisioned it happening any better. So it's just, uh, Eric, that's just the, hard to believe. That's the story right there, man. It's not, yeah. It, yeah, you came back. Yeah, they're, they should probably make a 30 30 about these five weeks <laughs> for you. But for real, though, you go from coming back, playing five days. I think you played 16 snaps that first week. And then the Nin Super 19. Bowl, 19, in the Super Bowl, yeah. you got the green sticker on your helmet. You're calling plays. You can, you're not coming out like that. How did that happen? Like, how do you go from retired to I'm calling the plays at the Super Bowl? Yeah, it was, uh, they put a great plan together, honestly. Uh, when I talked to Raheem, I talked to Coach Evero, who's a secondary coach, talked to some guys on the team, and then finally circled back to Sean. Uh, they, they didn't want to just throw me out there for the entire game. They knew they knew that wouldn't be that wouldn't be good for myself. I would get hurt. And and ironically, I hurt my hammy and my groin on the ninth play in the Cardinals game. And then I ended up playing 10 more plays, basically running a about 75 percent like I couldn't I couldn't sprint if I did I would have ripped everything and it just so happened that we ended up blowing them out obviously no one knew about this but we blew them out and I didn't have to play in the second half if that was a tight game I would have been in there and I for sure would have got hurt like hurt enough where I wouldn't have been able to play anymore and we attacked that rehab the following week like I went into the Tampa game not close to 100 percent and however it worked out, somehow, some way, uh, you know, I played 61 plays, 60 whatever in that game and basically take over from there. From there on out, it was like, all right, it's, 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 uh, it's my role now. And uh, I don't know how, honestly, looking back, mind over matter, you can say all that other stuff. I had a lot of, a lot of help with the treatment, with the trainers, with the strength staff, the coaches, putting me in spots, right? If you watch our film and watch what I was doing, it was stuff that naturally I'm really good at instinctually reading routes, reading plays in the run. Very rarely was I just a deep half player or trying to run with guys 40 yards down the field. Like uh, I did it a few times, which, you know, by motion and shifts, I had to be in those moments, but they weren't putting me in those spots where uh, you could see a 37 year old trying to run with these young guys. Uh, but I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's uh, a lot of work, man. I, I never have worked so hard mentally, physically the last five weeks of my entire life. I, I mean, uh, wow. I had wow. to. But let's be now. I'm going to ask you a real question. Not that they're not asking a real question. I'm going to ask you a real question. When it, actually soaked in and you were like wait they actually really want me to play wait <laughs> i'm actually gonna do this inside of you every athlete inside of them like they think they can do it now you have the actual yeah. opportunity to do it at a time where everybody wished they could start in the playoffs yeah. how inside you what was that emotion like driving up and getting ready to start this journey again well i was extremely confident that monday night uh i was i was really nervous that Friday practice uh, because there, everything was, I was on practice squad at the moment. So I had to go out and prove Friday and Saturday live reps that I could go get the job done. I knew what I was doing and we went through Indy felt good. And then boom, the first period of live reps was ones versus ones in a two minute drill. 
And so I run out there uh, two minutes against our starting offense. And, you know, it's just, it's just funny how, how the world works. They, they, for through 17 weeks, I think they, they beat the defense 15 or 16 times. And then I, you know, my first time out, we go four straight plays and get them off the field and we won the drill. And it wasn't because of me. Like I was just, I didn't have the ball thrown at me, but I was just running around covering guys. And in that moment, it really gave me the confidence, like, okay, this is, this is what I do, right? This is, this is who I am. I've done it for so long. Mentally, it, it came back like that. Uh, physically, I was a little nervous. Obviously, I hadn't been doing anything for two years, football-wise. But getting in that moment and just, and just getting through it and actually feeling like I can do this really gave me the confidence through that rest of the practice then to Saturday's practice. And from there on out, uh, the confidence was there that I'm not just going to be a guy. I could be myself. I was fresh. I was energized, obviously, by the opportunity. And after the first two plays of that Arizona game, uh, I was playing way too fast and just you know, really geeked out of my mind. Uh, I settled in and just played my game and played free and was just the second chance of a lifetime. And, and you can, you could tell how I was just running around having as much fun as I could because nobody gets the second chance. Right. It's unbelievable. I, here's my question. I, I, I'm curious. I saw the picture of your torn pec. Um, yeah. And, and so <sighs> because of that, I was able, we, we got to all see your torso. And you're looking lean and mean, you're ripped six pack in the whole deal. But what were you doing over the last two years in retirement that your body was in at least a good enough shape at its base that you could have the, the, the confidence to go, okay, my body can do this. I've been out for two years. My body can actually do this. Well, I've lost, I lost about 10 pounds. So I was around, I was around 182 uh, when they called me. And, uh, you know, I work out every day. I lift, I lift weights. I don't lift like I, I used to lift in the NFL, uh, obviously not nearly as strong. And obviously the muscle mass is not, is not there. It was never a lot to begin with, but, uh, and just the feeling, right? Like I, I worked out to make my body feel better and mentally to feel better, to be more patient with my kids, to be more into the moment and to, to be happy and, and uh, that's why I did it. it wasn't for any other reasons for that and honestly if if I hadn't been playing basketball and I know people think this is crazy and I know uh, people on the outside who who had never really been wearing my shoes think I'm crazy but I played basketball every off season right I played in adult leagues when I was playing uh, that was my whole off season workout and I think that directly correlated to me having a long successful career because I did different movements and I worked different muscles than just going straight back to football in February, March, April, May, leading up to OTAs. So that's what I did. And doing that over the course of the last year and a half off and on, right. It wasn't regularly every, every week, but over the last two months of December and January, and even November, we were playing regularly at my house five on five for two hours, once a week. And, feeling those doing those jumping cutting stopping if i hadn't been doing that i wouldn't even have entertained the idea because i knew i would have i would have ripped something broke something but being able to do that and to feel good my knees were feeling good you know gave me the confidence to at least go try all right so so the physical side of it I, we, we can all understand that now listening to what you're saying, but here's what I don't understand. And maybe you can explain it. I don't know if you can or not, but how do you though walk in to a team that you only played for, for one season that there's roster turnover, not, you don't know everybody. You may know a few guys that you played with um, for a coaching staff. That was different. Uh, head coach is the same, but to walk in and not just play, and not just play every down. And as Alex brought up, not just call the plays, become a leader again um, to, to be loved immediately. It seemed by your teammates. I mean, you're at that post-game press conference and McVay gives you the headlock and a noogie and tells you how much he loves you. That to me, more so than the physical aspect of you going back in after two years, which I found to be, you know, superhuman, the leadership 
and the way your teammates clearly felt about you, I don't know how that happened. Do you know how that happened? Uh, you know, I, I, as you guys know, you guys have, have known me for a long time. And I try to treat people, uh, treat everyone. Doesn't matter if your teammate, a friend, someone asked for an autograph. I just try to treat people with kindness and respect. And, and I come from a place where... Man, right. I and I think guys, because I'm real, I'm honest, and I'm trying to get what's best for them. I'm trying to get their very best out of them. Right. Uh, and is that, can you guys still hear me? The yeah, 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 yeah. We had a little, a little, okay. buffer, little buffer. Yeah. Uh, so my, my, my quick time with LA, uh, I think the guys had a, uh, obviously the respect from the onset, just because of what I've done in my career, but to get to know me and to build a relationship outside of the game carried over, right? When I, when I got in the building, I can't tell you the, the, the energy I felt and the love when I would see someone in the building for the first time and the smile and then the hugs and then just the excitement that I was back, it really just felt like, gosh, I'm, this is right, right? This is right. I'm here for a reason. Just go be me. Just go have fun and 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 try to bring out the best in these guys, right? And that's how. That's just how I live. That's just how I am. And I don't know if there's a specific reason how that came about. Uh, I think honestly, when after that Niner game, they were in a they were in a tough tough spot mentally uh, with everything on the line to lose the game they did. And then I kind of come in at the perfect time just to give this team a jolt of energy and excitement and just the, the passion and love for the game. I mean, you got to remember that this is something that I never thought was possible. So you got to envision me already the kind of guy that just loves being at work, but just times that by a hundred being back in the game on a playoff run and helping, helping these guys understand this opportunity kind of resonated through the entire team, the coaches, the building, and uh, just, you know, I think the guys uh, were excited that I was back, but even more so the dynamic of just helping everybody in the process and, and, and along the journey. Amazing. We're talking to Eric Weddle this afternoon. It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. Um, Eric, so... I, I want to ask a financial question about this because we all find your story to be so incredibly fascinating. And I still have a few other things I want to get to, but, but we didn't know this. And we were kind of talking about it amongst the three of us. When you go to sign with them to make this playoff run, is it simply like, Hey, I get whatever the playoff money is this week. And then I'll get the playoff money the next week. And it's, is it like, Hey guys, look, I'm down in San Diego. I'm enjoying my life. You want me? I need 500,000 to sign right now. I mean, is it, is there like a signing bonus issue <laughs> or is it literally just sign the contract? You make playoff money. That's the end of it. That's funny that you bring that up because after a while, my agent uh, was pretty hesitant about the idea to begin with. He was like, Eric, you know, you, you played so good for so long. You're going to, if you, come back you gotta understand you 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 don't play well people this is what people are going to say people are going to remember you know financially you you you've made plenty of money are you really going to play for just 25 grand 50 grand like are is that are you okay with that you make you know yeah you know, i've been paid 20 grand for an hour and a half speaking event so he's like are you know just putting those things in perspective giving me all the the negatives the positives about it all and uh we went to them, obviously, that after the- speaking went up, by the way. They, yeah, speaking yeah, has gone up. Speaking fee just went up. I don't, <laughs> I, don't I, I think it's ridiculous anyways to be paid that much for speaking. And I don't, I told them, I'm like, listen, I don't think I deserve this. And like, hey, this is our allotment, so we're going to give it to you. I'm like, are you sure? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, I appreciate it. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they, uh, you know, anyways, long story short. So we go back to them and I'm like, all right, let's do this. And we, we basically tell Sean, I'm like, Hey, uh, what, what can we do contract wise? And he's like, well, what do you think? What are you thinking? And I'm like, well, you know, 
the playoff first round was 32 grand. And after taxes, I'm making 15. I'm like, is there, is there anything I can make like 50? Like, I'm not even asking for a lot, a lot. Like I was just like, Hey, you know, what can we do? And come to find out there's nothing they could have done because I joined the team after the regular season. So it was playoff money or nothing. Right. And basically playing for a chance to join the team to uh, not really play for the amount of money that I was accustomed to, which was okay. I wasn't even expecting that. And then come to find out that I made half of the playoff money, <laughs> which is even, which is even more crazy just because I joined the team after the regular season. So the first two rounds, 32, five, I made 15. So after taxes, I made basically eight grand. Then oh. we came to the NFC championship game. We made 62. I made 31 and after taxes, probably 15. And then the and then the in the Super Bowl, we the winning guys make 150. I made 75. And when I found that out, I, I we found that out after the third game or going into the third game. And I'm like, that's like a loophole, like needs to be changed. <laughs> right. For yeah. sure. On. Right. Hold on one second. Eric Weddle is with us. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Dominating the SoCal radio airwaves for over 20 years. Join Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner for Kaplan and Crew every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. It doesn't matter what your background is and where you come from. If you have dreams and you have goals, and that's all that really matters. I owe a lot to Charlie. When you black, it's not a movement. It's a lifestyle. This is who we are. The Rising. Proudly brought to you by Subaru of El Cajon. An extraordinary experience for everyone. We were the first. We carry the fire that began civilizations, and then we built them. We strengthened a nation, and then we fought for it. We are scientists, poets, and lawmakers. We are artists, leaders, and warriors. And as we gaze toward tomorrow, we leave an indelible mark on the past. Black History Month on Your View is proudly brought to you by Subaru of El Cajon, an extraordinary experience for everyone. Main streets are the heart of our communities, where we connect with our neighbors, support local businesses, and share new adventures. Main Street Living celebrates all of this, bringing you uplifting stories with guests from across the country and your community. Main Street Living covers what's important to you today, from our street to your street. Join Cheryl, Danielle, and Quincy for Main Street Living, Mondays at 9 on Your View. Hi, my name is Giovanni, and this is my mural. What intrigued me most about this project is that I realized there was not a lot of black street artists, and then there was not a lot of black art on walls. So that's what intrigues me the most, is that this is a project that's putting up multiple and plentiful of walls of black people on walls. I'm Deborah, and this is my mural. When I was approached about this project as a portrait painter, I kind of like the idea of a challenge. I've done large scale pieces that were called murals, but I had never done an outdoor mural and I really love the subject matter. They didn't assign the, the subjects right off the bat. We had to kind of hear what they were gonna do. And I was thrilled. I got to pick it and this is the one that I was most happy with. Prospect Home Finance is a mortgage company. We specialize in residential refinances and home purchases. So Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, if you're going out looking for a pre-approval uh, to buy a new home, meet with the realtor, we would help you facilitate that. 
and walk you through the process from, from A to Z. We specialize in getting homeowners loans for their dream home, but we also do more than that. So today we came down to Ocean Beach, uh, partnered up with Surfrider, and had some team members come down here from Prospect, all pitched together, and had quite a bit of trash to clean up. It's really heartening to see people come out and really care for the waterways. It was great getting out here, and we're gonna do it again soon. We're always looking for ways to give back to the community of San Diego. So if you have any ideas or uh, need any help or support in any way, visit us at uh, homefinance.com. Listen to the Mike Greenberg Show, 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday. Greeny brings his unmatched depth of sports knowledge, fun, and entertainment back to ESPN on a daily basis. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. Explore the Southwest lifestyle, the culture, the music, the food, y más. Join hosts J.R. Cardenas and Vanessa Ramirez on Subida. Welcome to 2022. Did you make a New Year's resolution? We have the top 10 most popular and our advice on the next Suvida. Watch Suvida Sunday night at 7 on Your View and YourView.com. When doors open for kids, they change lives. For over 75 years, the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater San Diego has been opening its doors to provide a safe place for kids whenever they are out of school. A place with caring mentors and opportunities to focus on academic success, healthy lifestyles, and character building. At the club, we do whatever it takes to meet the needs of every kid that walks through our doors by inspiring, empowering, and changing lives. We were the first. We carried the fire that began civilizations, and then we built them. We strengthened a nation, and then we fought for it. We are scientists, poets, and lawmakers. We are artists, leaders, and warriors. And as we gaze toward tomorrow, we leave an indelible mark on the past. Black History Month on Your View is proudly brought to you by Subaru of El Cajon, an extraordinary experience for everyone. Here's Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60-second timeout with Haley Stasiak. San Diego State men's basketball got the win against Utah State on Tuesday night, 75-56. to Matt Bradley had 22 points in the win, recording his ninth 20-point game of the season and the 19th of his career. Kishad Johnson had another solid performance, tying his season high with 14 points. While well, Adam Seiko had 11 points, Nathan Mensah had 8 points and tied for a game-high 8 rebounds. SDSU shot 51.7% from the field and had 23 points off of turnovers to help seal the win. The Aztecs improved to 16-6 and on the season and 8-3 and in Mountain West play. The regular season is winding down for college basketball. The Aztecs only have 6 games remaining. SDSU takes on Fresno State on Saturday the first of two matchups with the Bulldogs in the next few weeks. That's your 60 second timeout. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew Tonight. Kaplan and Crew Tonight's 60 second timeout is presented by Your View. Prospect Home Finance, San Diego's mortgage leader, is celebrating 15 years of happy clients. HomeFinance.com is the go-to resource online or on your mobile device to discover your best home loan options. Hi, I'm Jason Bondrack, CEO at Prospect Home Finance. I want to say thank you to all of our clients, both past and future. As part of our 15-year anniversary, we'll close your home loan in 15 business days. Start your easy home finance process today at homefinance.com. My intention is to box to win a clean fight. Convicted for draft evasion, threatened with imprisonment, Muhammad Ali is banned from fighting in all 50 states. But in Atlanta, Georgia, in October of 1970, that all changed. Matched against the top contender for the boxing crown, the greatest is back. Ali's comeback proudly brought to you by Subaru of El Cajon. Welcome back. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, John Browner, and Alex Padilla. Yes. Uh, hey, for those of you that are just getting with us, Eric Weddle was telling an amazing story because we asked him because we're nosy. 
We asked you're them, nosy, uh, dude. Right, I'm nosy. I admit, <laughs> hey, hey, listen, no, Eric, that's a great question. Every, great every question. thank you. I mean, our common friend Charlie Hoffman, every time he comes on, I yes. make I grill him about how he gets paid, how it happens, yeah. how money is deposited, how much money I grill Charlie about money because I think that listeners really find this interesting. For those of you that are just getting with us, Eric Wells telling this amazing story. He goes to the Rams. When he gets there, he realizes he's going to make $32,000 for the first round of the playoffs and asks like any business person would, hey, is there anything else you guys can do? And they can't. They can't give a signing bonus. They're not going to sign a long-term contract. But, Eric, you were saying that what you did not know at the time was 32 grand first round, 32 grand second round, 75 grand championship game, 150 grand for winning the Super Bowl. But for some reason – you actually, because of when you signed, only got half of all that money pre-tax. Why is that? I, it's in the CBA. I, I don't know if it's for teams to not let them sign guys after the season, uh, but that wouldn't make much sense because I wasn't on a team. I don't really know, but I was just kind of shocked by it. But at the end of the day, like it wasn't, it was never about the money. Uh, it was about this opportunity and, you know, just feeling like I was meant to be in this position. So at the end of the day, like I was, it's, it, it wasn't the end all be all, but it was just crazy to, to think that you're starting safety in the NFC championship and the Super Bowl uh, made a total of like 50 grand compared to, you know, 200K right. uh, that like everyone else. Amazing. But you know, the, the chance of a lifetime and to end up with a Super Bowl ring is, is priceless. I mean, oh, dude, it's, it's going to, this, this worth I every penny. You, oh, I listen, I promise you this, man. If you want it, if you decide you want it, as Browner points out, speaking engagements, all of a sudden go through the roof. <laughs> um, listen, I'll say something else. Um, I think that there's a book potentially if you wanted it to be. And, and listen, here's the other thing like legacy, your agent brought up to you, Hey Eric, if you go back and you suck yeah. and you're old or whatever, but you played so well two years removed from, from retirement that this just takes your career and your legacy mm -hmm. to a whole different level. So the money, should you want it, will be there after the fact. Yeah. Eric Weddle, let me ask you this. Probably our favorite part, and you've probably heard this as you've made the rounds with people you know <clears throat> in San Diego. Probably our favorite part was your candor when it came to what motivated you. Look, we're scorned Charger fans. We're all upset that the Chargers left, okay? But you clearly also had something inside of you that was motivating you. And, and moreover, you were willing to talk about that. Um, why did you choose to do that? Well, it's, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason. Right. And uh, I loved my time in San Diego. I really, I really did. I mean, I love the city, love the fans, my teammates, uh, some coaches, some not. Right. And organizationally, there are some people that I still talk to within the organization and some obviously not. And for reasons that have been documented and, you know, they're, they're all, everyone has their motivations, right? Everyone has their reasons. And I'm a very cut and dry person. And when you don't treat me the way I feel I should be treated and how I treat everybody, then that's just something that's going to sit with me for a very, very, very long time. And it's just funny, like when, when, when players become honest and show some realness about who they are and what they're about, it's like, Oh, you're petty and this and that. It's like, it has nothing to do with that. I'm not petty to the organization. I'm petty. And I wouldn't say petty. I'm just stating the facts that some people in that organization did things that weren't right and treated me not right and disrespected me and said things that were completely wrong and false. So as a man and as someone that is high on character and is high that stands on the, on, on my feet on, on the, who I am and what I stand for him and my last name, of course, that's going to drive me. And I wanted to get the last say, right? So I went on to Baltimore and balled out. Right. And then I went to LA and, and tried one more time. Right. And then I come back and I have an opportunity of a lifetime and to say, to come full circle 
after everything I've been through, uh, to not say that that wasn't an important part in my life to drive me and push me into the player that I became both on the field and off a better husband, a better teammate, a better friend, right. Understanding who really has my back and who doesn't like, that was a very important time. I went to Baltimore with five people, Chanel and my four kids and nobody else. We moved there. We lived there full time and started over. Right. I got the love back into football because of my last year was so miserable. I didn't want to play again. Right. Because of how they treated me. So how can I, how can I sit there and not say that didn't have an impact on my career. And in that moment, I wanted to let everyone know that, hey, things need to be done right, right? Just because we don't agree, which we never did agree on anything because we never talked, but that's besides the point. It's about communication. It's about being a man. It's about, hey, this is what I believe for my team. And we believe that we're better off without you. If that's the case, just be a man and tell me that. Right. It's no different than the Ravens saying, hey, we got one year left and we think you should take a pay cut. Well, I don't agree with that, Eric. He's like, well, you know, we want to get sure. Hey, expect that if that's what you feel. And we'll go our different ways. But I still have a relationship with Baltimore because why? Because he was man enough to just communicate it to me face to face. I'm a big boy. I'm not I'm not emotional. I'm not prideful. Hey, just treat me like a man and respect me. And so. I don't know. I just wanted to, to get that off my chest because uh, I've been holding on to that for a very long time. And well, well, well who were you? you? But you mentioned you mentioned Tom Telesco by name. Of course I did. I'm curious, though, um, when you felt disrespected and understandably so. Listen, man, I remember a lot of things that happened during your Charger career, two in particular that stand out. One, the time your daughter was was a Charger girl at halftime and you chose to stay out at half and watch that. When, listen, the season was miserable and Mike McCoy throws a fine your way, which was, you know, just a total slap in the face. It it wasn't Mike McCoy. It was Tom Telesco who fined me. Oh, okay. See, I didn't realize that. Yes. So that, so that's, so that's one thing. The other part of it was, I remember you going through a contract negotiation. It was never a negotiation. What, what was it? That's what it was. Nothing. We, we tried countless times to talk to them and they never would talk to us, never would return our calls, would pass by us at the combine and ignore my agent. So comes the OTA time and that's all documented. He gets on the radio and says, Eric wants this, Eric wants that. How can that be true, Tom, if we never talked? Explain that to me. So, uh, and there was a lot of things said face to face, which there's no reason to get into because that's that's in the past, but you know, you just don't do those things. But were you, were you only, and again, this is what, what I love about, this is what was inside of you. It was driving you. Was it just Tom or like, did you have anger towards Dean, towards the Spanos family? Like, why didn't you were their guy? They drafted you. They, you You were a leader of their franchise. You were a face guy of their franchise. So was it just the GM or was it the ownership as well? I mean, at the end of the day, it, it, you just realize that most people are just yes men and they don't have your back. Uh, they're not people that will go to bat for you and not just them, coaches, teammates. I mean, it was a lonely year for me, man. It was. Knowing people for nine years, you walk down the hall and, the, and you say hello to them and they just ignore you, right? Yeah. Like, how does that feel? How does that feel when I help people get jobs in that organization? It was, it was miserable. Like people, and I'm not, and I, and I don't need anyone to feel sorry for me. Right. But the reality is, is what, is what it was. And, and I tried to be as honest as I could. And people just thought I was just crazy. And, but hey, again, Hey, that's life. You live and you learn. And I grew and, and became a better man because of it. And, and it came full circle. Go ahead. With everything that you had going on in that year, did, were you ever worried about your reputation around the league? Because clearly things were not. Of course not. They, were talk, they, they weren't talking to you directly. So were you ever worried about when you got to Baltimore that there was some negativity around you? No, of course not, man. People know me, know what I'm about. They respect me. No, nah, there, there wasn't. 
well, why was there 18 teams that wanted me once I could became a free agent? Mm -hmm. Right. Like everyone knew, everyone knew the charges were crazy for letting me go. So it, it, that was, that was never a concern of mine. The concern was whether or not I even want to play anymore after that year. Dude, this is the most amazing part of the story is that, is that you felt a certain way, way back when you went on to use your words, you balled out in Baltimore, go into retirement. Were you, were you happily retired? Oh yeah. Yeah. I was, I was, I was in a great place. Uh, you know, we, uh, obviously the pandemic didn't help anybody, let alone me. I, I was, a, I was a month into retirement, having a great time, drop the kids off, have about a good five hours to do whatever I wanted, take a nap, go hit the links, go take it, go to lunch, go to the grocery store, whatever I want to do. It was nice. Then boom, we're all stuck at home trying to homeschool and all that crap that was going on. So I was, that was not a easy month for me. And then we just started traveling. We started going to other States that were more open than this crazy state. Uh, and then I got in, was able to start coaching my son. And then I started doing some, some scouting for the Ravens, which was a lot of fun. I, I scouted 35 guys for the 20, 2021 draft. So this past season and uh, tried to stay connected there. And then I was able to, Eventually, this past fall was the head coach of my son's 12U tackle team, and I was ecstatic about that opportunity to, to give back to my son and give back to the kids and try to help these kids uh, teach them the game of, of football that I love so much. And then just not having anything revolved around me was like a weight off my shoulders, right? It was just so refreshing to be able to uh, – understand that we could go to every holiday, right? That uh, Eric, dad wasn't going to be home for Christmas or he wasn't going to be, was he going to have to work on Thanksgiving? Was, was Halloween going to be able to be home in time to take the kids trick or treating? Like all those things you, you had to stress about every year. Right. And now it was, it was none of that. So it was just, it was great. I was happy. I was content. I never wanted to play again. I loved watching the games. I love supporting and watching all my teammates, ex-teammates, and friends across the league on Sundays and Saturdays and Thursdays and Mondays. And so, yeah, I mean, never, ever once did I tell my agent I wanted to come back or did mm -hmm. I reach out to teams, right? Mm -hmm. it, it was because I was good. I was good. I gave everything I had to this, to this league, to my teammates, to the organization I played for, and I was good. I was content. I went out on the way I wanted to go out. And I was at the next journey of, of my, of my story. Yeah. You know, what was the most amazing part about the whole playoff run, at least from my perspective as, as a fan of yours and a supporter. And, and I, you know, this is kind of one of those things where I think a lot of San Diegans felt ownership in this story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. through you. Um, the most in interesting part of it all to me was, is after the Tampa game, when you and Tom Brady embraced on the field. And I thought to myself, wow. Tom Brady has this tremendous respect for Eric Weddle. Like the way you guys were embraced after that game that did you go looking for him? Did he come looking for you? Did you guys just run into each other? How did that happen? And what did that mean to you? Yeah, it, it was, it kind of happened organically. Uh, you know, in, in those moments, it's sometimes bigger than football. Right. And you know, my, my dad taught me from the earliest age is always to respect your opponent and respect the game and to always congratulate your opponent. And it's always carried with me from the time I can remember. And I was saying what's up to other guys and some old teammates. And then I turned and I saw him like pretty close to me and we just kind of linked up and it was just an opportunity for me to tell uh, a guy I've admired so much from afar uh, how much I respected and appreciated his greatness and his strive and daily uh, drive to be great because it's hard to get to that level and I'm not comparing myself to him but I strive to be at that level because of him right in some ways he helped me from afar and I just in that moment I wanted to tell him I didn't know wait, if he was going to retire or not I knew I was after this season <laughs> I was re-retiring uh and whatever, whatever, we, would we ever cross paths? I don't know. And it was just that moment. I was like, hey, man, I just want to tell him how much I appreciated him. 
and we kind of joke back and forth uh, in that little convo. Uh, you tell him like I finally got you. Yeah, well, <laughs> I I should. I congratulated him on his retirement, and uh, you know through Texas, and I should have said that I was. I think I was zero and six all time against him, and I finally got a finally got my win. Uh, just another reason why this crazy run was meant to be. Right. Uh, but just, you know, it's sometimes it's bigger than football and it's bigger than, than the bucks versus the Rams and all this other stuff. Like in the moment, you know, you, you just try to appreciate what guys do in this league and also how guys have helped others. And he yeah. helped me, uh, even though he had no idea he did, he did. Yeah. How, the whole time you were playing for the Rams in these five or six weeks, where'd you live? Uh, in a hotel, <laughs> a lonely <laughs> hotel room. I, I, uh, Thousand I was, Oaks. Yeah. Right off Westlake, the Westlake Hyatt five seventeen for the last five and a half weeks. And each and every week on a Monday, because, you know, I, I was living day to day, week to week. Like I wasn't thinking of the Super Bowl. I was thinking, Oh my gosh, how am I going to get ready for Monday night? Okay. We won that game. Then I'd have to go down. My key wouldn't work. I'd have to go down. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I'm here for another week. So put this till next Monday. So boom, go throughout the week, barely there, boom, boom, boom. We end up winning. Same thing. I, I walk up the stairs. I'd park in the back because I wouldn't want to walk all the way to the front. I was in the back corner. So I'd walk upstairs. My knees are aching. And then I get to the door and the dang key wouldn't work. So I had to walk back down the stairs, go get a new key. Can you push, push, push my, my room for another week, please. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was, uh, I was, I was glad to get home. Let me tell you last late last night, I was glad to get back home into my house. And what did you wear the whole time? I, I, I brought clothes for the week and then, uh, what, what ended up happening? Tampa game Chanel flew all the kids out because she's like, I'm not missing this. We're, we're on, we're along the ride. So she packed up all the kids. So she ended up bringing me a few outfits for the next week. And then, uh, I ended up buying some clothes online that has sent to the, <laughs> sent to the hotel. So I wasn't wearing the same outfits every week and, uh, for the games, but I was basically, you know, in the, in the NFL, like it doesn't, I, I could wear the same stuff every day because literally you, you wake up, you put some sweats on, and as soon as you get to the facility, you're you're changing into your workout clothes or your or ram sweats. So I'm not even wearing uh, the initial outfit anyways until I get back home, and then I take them off and put some shorts on. So uh, it wasn't really that uh, big of an issue, but it was for game days because I only brought one outfit because <laughs> I didn't know how long this was gonna last. I just you know we're, we're week to week. Let me let's see what happens Monday. Let's try to get this win and then worry about what happens after that. Hey, Eric, Hilarious. we never even asked you, man. You won the Super Bowl. Dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, I know. Oh, yeah. Dude, we you won got to that yet. Like, first of all, like, you've had so many, you had so many playoff, uh, like, heartbreaks here in San oh, Diego. Oh, gosh, bro. Dude, like, you won the freaking Super Bowl, man. Like, how did it finally feel? Obviously, not the way anybody ever writes anything like this, but you won the Super Bowl, man. Congrats. Yeah, man. I know. Thank you. Uh, you know, each week after the Arizona game, I mean, we were, we were down to the wire last play wins each week tampa frisco in the in the super bowl and i just kept thinking about all the times we just didn't get it done and i'm like we're we're finally getting it done like this is this is crazy this is like how it feels on the other side right mm -hmm. of those heartbreaking losses where you're just like your your heart's taken out of you and you you know you you, you go back the next day and you wish you know what what could we have done better what i could have done better blah blah blah. and then now i'm on the other side i mean i game winning field goal by matt gay in tampa then we come back and i'm on the field watching donald uh throw the guy down and i'm covering kittle over the middle and i see the ball flare up in the air and i'm like oh my gosh and then t howard catches it boom and we win it boom it's pandemonium right and then the same thing happens in the super bowl it's like man, it was, it was just, uh, I wish, I wish I could bottle up those, those raw emotions and moments, because like I said, we were, we were out in the locker room having a great time. Then we went out to the, the, the to the Super Bowl party and I got back at like 5am and 
it was just like you didn't want the night to end because you're never going to get that back. You're never going to be in that moment. You're never going to have those feelings, those memories, those so vivid visualizations of winning the Super Bowl, being part of the Super Bowl because, you know, I'm done. I'm re-retired, right? And uh, it was just a crazy, a crazy day. The only, the only, I brought this up. I, I think it was, I was on a Rich Eisen or Rome, one of the two, a couple of days ago. And I brought up, they're like, they're like, what did you think of the Super Bowl? The, how cool and amazing was it? And I was like, honestly, I didn't know if we were the show or with the rock was the show or <laughs> Dre. if the celebrities were the show or the halftime, like it is so everything, but the game, it, it really took away my feelings towards the Super Bowl, quite honestly, because it was, it was, it was everything but the Super Bowl. It Wait, was ho- hold on one quick second. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific. Every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal sports talk. You're watching Kaplan and crew tonight powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio and your view featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. You're listening to the 50,000 Watt Powerhouse, bringing you the new generation of radio up and down all of California. With a little bit of attitude. This is SoCal Sports Talk, the all-new and mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. If you love animals, Animal Zone is for you. From rescues to animal experts, Animal Zone is fun for the whole family. Watch Animal Zone right here on your view, Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. And visit AnimalZone.org to learn more about the show. We were the first. We carried the fire that began civilizations, and then we built them. We strengthened a nation, and then we fought for it. We are scientists, poets, and lawmakers. We are artists, leaders, and warriors. And as we gaze toward tomorrow, we leave an indelible mark on the past. Black History Month on Your View is proudly brought to you by Subaru of El Cajon, an extraordinary experience for everyone. Prospect Home Finance, San Diego's mortgage leader, is celebrating 15 years of happy clients. HomeFinance.com is the go-to resource online or on your mobile device to discover your best home loan options. Hi, I'm Jason Bondrack, CEO at Prospect Home Finance. I want to say thank you to all of our clients, both past and future. As part of our 15-year anniversary, we'll close your home loan in 15 business days. Start your easy home finance process today at homefinance.com. Here's Kaplan Accrued tonight's 60-second timeout with Haley Stasiak. San Diego State men's basketball got the win against Utah State on Tuesday night, 75-56. to Matt Bradley had 22 points in the win, recording his ninth 20-point game of the season and the 19th of his career. Kishaw Johnson had another solid performance, tying his season high with 14 points. While Adam Seiko had 11 points, Nathan Mensa had 8 points and tied for a game-high 8 rebounds. SDSU shot 51.7% from the field and had 23 points off of turnovers to help seal the win. The Aztecs improved to 16-6 and six on the season and 8-3 and three in Mountain West play. The regular season is winding down for college basketball. The Aztecs only have six games remaining. SDSU takes on Fresno State on Saturday, the first of two matchups with the Bulldogs in the next few weeks. That's your 60-second timeout. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew Tonight. Kaplan and Crew Tonight's 60-second timeout is presented by Your View. We are very proud to announce that the Mightier 1090 is SoCal's newest ESPN affiliate. Introducing the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. One of the largest radio stations in North America just got bigger and better. Joining forces with the worldwide leader of sports ESPN. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Today we proudly held the ribbon cutting ceremony for our new office in La Jolla, California. Here we are in the Merrill Lynch building right in the middle of the village and really, really happy to be part of this neighborhood. 
This is really special to Prospect in that it almost signifies the fact that we've grown up officially. Uh, we have survived the past 15 years by being very agile. We come to this one amazing location from three separate offices. So it's fantastic having everyone under one roof. This is gonna do wonders in terms of streamlining our operations. Being able to communicate with someone down the hall as opposed to someone who's several blocks away is gonna be terrific. Our CEO, Jason Vondrak, he's a very humble person, but I know this day really, really means a lot to him in that he has led this company for 15 years and he started this business out of a studio apartment and look where we are now. That's huge. I think this new space signifies just endless possibilities for prospects. I mean, we're headquartered in La Jolla, but we do business all around the country. So our goal is to be licensed to offer home financing in all 50 states and we're well on our way. Prospect Home Finance. Fast friendly, affordable. I founded Driveway Auction after working in the automotive industry, becoming a dealer and questioning the process that puts consumers at a huge disadvantage when selling their cars. The big difference between Driveway and the other services is that Driveway works for you. If you've ever tried to sell a car, you know that it's an awful process that makes you either go and meet strangers in parking lots to take test drives or sit at the dealership for hours and hours while they wear you down. Driveway eliminated all of that. With Driveway Auction, we come to you. So we complete the 40-point vehicle inspection from the comfort and convenience of your own driveway. We send an independent third-party inspector to take measurements of the car, take pictures of it, evaluate the condition. But we use that information to advocate for you, using our network of buyers to compete. And when they compete, you win. They take over the whole process, and you don't have to do anything. Our clients get more money and a better process with Driveway. Everybody at Driveway made me feel so comfortable during the whole process. It was a great experience. Prospect Home Finance is a mortgage company. We specialize in residential refinances and home purchases. So Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, if you're going out looking for a pre-approval uh, to buy a new home, meet with the realtor, we would help you facilitate that and walk you through the process from, from A to Z. We specialize in getting homeowners loans for their dream home, but we also do more than that. So today we came down to Ocean Beach, uh, partnered up with Surfrider, and had some team members come down here from Prospect, all pitched together, and had quite a bit of trash to clean up. It's really heartening to see people come out and really care for the waterways. It was great getting out here and we're gonna do it again soon. We're always looking for ways to give back to the community of San Diego. So if you have any ideas or uh, need any help or support in any way, visit us at uh, homefinance.com. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio and Your View, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Hi, my name is Giovanni, and this is my mural. What intrigued me most about this project is that I realized there was not a lot of black street artists, and then there was not a lot of black art on walls. So that's what intrigues me the most, is that this is a project that's putting up multiple and plentiful of walls of black people on walls. I'm Deborah, and this is my mural. When I was approached about this project as a portrait painter, I kind of like the idea of a challenge. I've done large-scale pieces that were called murals, but I had never done an outdoor mural, and I really love the subject matter. They didn't assign the, the subjects right off the bat. We had to kind of hear what they were going to do, and I was thrilled. I got to pick it, and this is the one that I was most happy with. If you love animals, Animal Zone is for you. From rescues to animal experts, Animal Zone is fun for the whole family. Watch Animal Zone right here on Your View, Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. And visit AnimalZone.org to learn more about this show. 
joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. Hey, so welcome to today's show, and I'm excited because 